thankful to organizers for my uh, invitation here. And dear friends, I, I will be talking to you for a subject. Uh, I think all of us are using these combinations now for the last few months. And the growth of this combination, fixed dose combination is so much that uh, I think everybody is using them in large number of your patients. So today we are going to discuss this fixed dose combination of three important drugs, metformin, DPP-4 inhibitor, and SGLT2 inhibitors. And we all know that large number of drugs were developed for the last 30 years, and we are using them in our practice. But there are many challenges in the management of our diabetic patients. First important challenge is number of patients. Huge number of patients are there. Increased prevalence of diabetes. Diabetes is a disease of complications. We all know we have patients who are developing all those micro, macrovascular complications, and now you are adding on them uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, obstructive sleep, apneas, et cetera. Cardiovascular disease is very important in our diabetic patients to cause morbidity and mortality. There is high cost to the treatment of complications. So once a diabetic patient is not treated properly, there is an important uh, complication cost which is linked to it. And it is important, uh, you can see that uh, management of hypertension and dyslipidemia is not that difficult because we have very good drugs. But the glycemic parameters are continuously changing. We have to run after hyperglycemia. So difficult to achieve and maintain good glycemic control is a very important concept. What we say, diabetes is a progressive disease. And we, if you look at the control of our patients, you find only uh, something like less than 30% of our patients are having HB1C of less than 7%. And it is very difficult to keep them below 7. As the years are advancing, you find more and more patients are developing increasing hyperglycemia. And you find that single drug, if you are using it, it may not be sufficiently reducing as the years are advancing. So here is an example, metformin given for three years, controlling hyperglycemia for uh, 44, you can say, percent of patients. But after nine years only, 13 percent of patients are controlled with metformin. So indicating that diabetes is a progressive disease and you have to up titrate and you have to bring in new combinations in the management of your diabetic patients. Now, earlier we were having a sequential management plan. Our patient comes to us, we give lifestyle plus uh, one monotherapy, patient improves to some extent, after a few months, patient again deteriorates. And after that deterioration, we up titrate or bring in new drug. So again, uh, for few weeks and few months, patient is improving, then again deteriorating. So here what we are doing, we are having a failure-oriented therapy. First we allow the patient to fail, and then we up titrate or bring in new combinations. As compared to that, if we have a proactive approach, where we know that patient is having a HB1C of 9 or 9.5, and we know that all our antidiabetic drugs cannot reduce it by more than 1% individually. So you have to start with a combination. And of course, as the year advances, you have to up-titrate them, and you have to bring in new drugs in the combinations of already pre-existing uh, therapy. So this is called proactive approach, where you are proactively increasing and bringing in combinations of drugs in your patient's management. Now, sequentially up titrating is very, very, uh, you can say, highly you find that it is associated with inertia. And you have inertia, you can see here from one drug, if you are going to two, you are spending something like 2.9 years from two oral drugs. If you are going for third oral drugs, you are waiting for 6.9 to 7.2 years or so. And then, of course, if you are, have to bring in insulin, which is at the fag end of the life of the patient. So that is how we say inertia. And Dr. Bhattacharya highlighted this study by Dr. Kunti, where they say that if you are failing to control hyperglycemia in the first year of your patient's life, then after five years, you find there is a significant complications, particularly cardiovascular complications in your patient. So here you find more than 50% uh, patients are having all these uh, macrovascular complications. Prescription of uh, 
number of drugs, if they are increasing, the compliance of the patient is reducing. So here you find, as the doses per day, two drugs, three drugs, four drugs are increasing, the adherence to the therapy is significantly reducing. And it is there all over our Indian context. You find from north to south, east to west, compliance, adherence to the treatment is very, very poor in our patients. And poor adherence lead to increased risk of hospitalization and more complications. So here you find something like 39% of our patients are dying only because of poor compliance and uncontrolled hyperglycemia and significant complications. Uh, Dr. Shishadri used to say that the oral drugs do not work in those patients who do not take them. So <laughs> that is his dialogue. So here we find that diabetes is a complex disease and you have so many uh, pathophysiologies for the development of hyperglycemia, what we say ominous octet. And important thing is there are so many good drugs targeting those important pathophysiological aspects. So if you are combining them and you have complementary mechanism action of these drugs, so if some side effect of one drug is occurring, it will be counteracted by the other drugs. So you find that diabetes is a progressive disease. There are multiple, co you can say, pathophysiologies. You have so many good drugs available to you. It is our duty to select those drugs in a very gentle way, very scientific way, so that we can target most of these pathophysiological aspects. So what are the uh, uh, recommendations by different bodies regarding combination therapy? So ADA says that if your patient is having a HV1C more than 1.5% above the target, probably you require combination. ACE guidelines are strict, very strict. They say if it is more than 7.5, you have to bring in combination of two drugs. And if it is more than 9%, probably they highlight a triple drug combination is required in these patients if uh, not given insulin. Insulin is given in this setting where patient is having significant hyperglycemia, osmotic symptoms, and uh, catabolic symptoms. RSSDI of our Indian context, you find that they say that if the HVMC is more than 1.5 above target, you have to bring in combinations. And all these guidelines are now highlighting one more aspects that if there is a pre-existing cardiovascular disease or high risk for the cardiovascular disease, you have heart failure or you have patient with uh, CKD, these group of drugs should be preferred like SGLT2 inhibitors in this type of patients or as uh, in earlier lecture it was highlighted that GLP-1 receptor agonists are required. So here ACE guidelines are telling us that if the HB1C is more than 7.5 dual drug and if it is more than 9% triple drug combinations are required. In Indian context, in Indian context, Dr. A.K. Das highlighted this point that our patients are receiving this combination, dual therapy and triple therapy, as the HV1C of our patients are gradually deteriorating. So we know that diabetes is a progressive disease. There is a suboptimal control of our patients and a single drug can't target all those defects and you have to have combination of therapies which are having complementary mechanisms of actions. Again, they highlight the same point. If the HV1C is high, you have to bring in combinations of these drugs. And the approach to rational combination is that they will provide benefit, like drugs complement each other's action, uh, benefit in the form of influencing multiple targets to optimize glycemic control. They preserve beta cell uh, and are effective for a longer time. And matching doses are there so that patient will get back maximum Benefit here, a expert opinion group was there, which again highlighted the same thing, that there are patients who require combination of drugs, their glucose profile is right from the beginning bad, and you have to bring in combinations. India is having a unique distinction of having large number of fixed dose combinations. We started it, and we were criticized by the West that why you are combining so many drugs. But now FDA and U USA, you find that there are fixed dose combination of dual drugs, as well as even triple drug combinations are now available in USA. And our uh, scenario is, sometimes we say it is good, but it is very, very confusing now, because large number of drugs are there where you have dual as well as triple drug combinations of all the 
different combinations and perturbations. Here you find that now we have triple drug combination, newer one. Earlier we were having metformin, glimipride, and pioglitazone or uh, wogli boss and all those things. But now we have this dapagliflozin, cetagliptin, vildagliptin in addition to metformin. So we all know that these three group of drugs are having good benefits of reducing HV1C. We all know metformin acting at the level of liver and reducing hepatic glucose output, SGLT2 inhibitors are reducing glucose reuptake and causes glycosuria and having so other benefit cardiovascular and renal and DPP4 inhibitors are very gentle drugs, very effectively treating our elderly patients, do not cause hypoglycemia and do not cause weight gain. So merits of this triple fixed dose combination of metformin, DPP4 inhibitor and SGLT2, you find there is an early and robust lowering of HV1C, more rapid attainment of glycemic target, avoidance of clinical inertia. That is very common in our patient's profile and potential for early combination therapy to improve beta cell function. Initiation of this therapeutic intervention with complementary mechanism of action and potential to use less maximum doses so that the side effect of these combinations are less, reduce pill burden, and lower manufacturing cost sometimes is also there. So here you have ominous octet, and if you are combining these three group of drugs, metformin, DPP-4, and SGLT-2, you are targeting something like six defect out of those eight defects, and you have all these good rationale for combination of SGLT-2, DPP-4, and metformin, which is acting at the level of uh, kidney, uh, pancreas, in, in creatine axis as well as like metformin working at multiple places. Whether we have some scientific evidence for them? Yes, of course. We have some evidences in the form of tri study, Mesida study, and UD trio FDA study. So here you have global, you can say, evidences which are telling us that this fixed dose combination, one pill containing three drugs are now approved by even FDA and they are now available globally. The question arises, if you are giving them separately, and when you combine them in a same pill, whether their bioequivalence will be affected. And here you find, in this study, which is tri study, where they looked at the bioequivalence of uh, individual salt, comparing it to the fixed dose combination. And you find here, whether you are using lower doses of these combinations, and higher doses of this combination, the bioequivalence is not affected, highlighting that you can combine it, these three drugs, in a single pill. Another UDT trio FDC trial, which is uh, ha having a combination of these three drugs, and these are patients are followed, and as compared to the dual therapy of uh, cetagliptin and metformin, here you find that there is a 1.72% reduction with trio triple drug as compared to the dual fixed dose of 1.07 reduction. And secondary outcome of uh, uh, fasting plasma, uh, glucose and postprandial are also significantly higher in triple combination as compared to dual. Another study is MESIDA trial. And here you find that these patients were given either dual therapy or triple therapy. And the primary objective was that look at the HV1C reduction. And secondary outcome was body weight, change in fasting, postprandial, and looking at the safety aspects of this. And here you find that as compared to the dual therapy, there is a 1.5% uh, reduction with triple drug as compared to 1.02% reduction in HVNC. Mean fasting was reduced by 19 as compared to only 3.67 with dual, and postprandial is reduced by 48 milligram as compared to only 13 milligram, and body weight was reduced when you are using these SGLT2 inhibitors, and there were uh, clear-cut showing evidences. Another study was there with other combinations in the form of metformin, dapagliflozin, as well as sexagliptin, and this combination was available, and you, they are comparing it to the dual combination of metformin and cetagliptin. Again, they are telling us that this triple drug combination is better. Similarly, another study, dapa, ceta, metformin, and here what they have done, they compared triple drug to dual drug of metformin and CETA and metformin and dapagliflozin. And what are the results? You definitely have better results when you are using triple combination as compared to 
dual combination and secondary efficacy of fasting and PPR also significantly reduced. Number of patients below HV1C of 7 is definitely higher in triple drug combination as compared to dual and of course change in body weight because of SGLT2 uh, inhibitor is reduced in these two arms where SGLT2 are reduced. And now whenever you are using combination as compared to the other combinations, earlier combinations, because of the benefits, cardiovascular benefits and renal benefits, now our approach is changing towards these newer SGLT2 uh, included triple combinations and you find that these triple combinations are very, very effective. Looking at this comparison, you find that when you are using metformin and sulfonylurea, a powerful combination, early efficacy, of course, but when you are using metformin and DPP-4, powerfulness may be reduced, but they are having good, uh, you can say, low risk of hypoglycemia. But when you are using metformin and SGLT2, you find, and DPP-4, of course, you find there is a huge amount of benefit taking care of not only powerful and early efficacy, low risk of hypoglycemia of these three drugs, as well as weight is not increasing, in fact decreasing, and blood pressure is also reducing, and you have cardiovascular and renal benefits in these patients. Now, SGLT2 inhibitors causes increase in glucagon. So there is a small increase in glucagon, and it causes increased hepatic glucose output, increasing endogenous glucose production, reducing the efficacy of SGLT2. But as compared to that, if you have DPP-4 inhibitor, they reduces glucagon. So combining these two group of drugs, you find there is a significant counteraction of these side effects of SGLT2 inhibitors. There are studies which say that when you are combining these two drugs, there are less chances of developing urinary mycotic infections also. So DPP-4 plus SGLT2 at the background of metformin, of course. So dear friends, in summary, metformin, DPP-4 inhibitors, and SGLT2 inhibitors as a fixed dose in single tablet is a suitable option for Indian type 2 diabetic patients for the following reasons. They are having significant reduction in therapeutic inertia because a powerful combination reduces HVNC very fast. They are, uh, can be given initially in our patients as a combination therapy. A1C is significantly reduced and complementary mechanism action as we just discussed is there. And this combination of three drugs provides safe, rapid and sustained glycemic control. Uh, chances of hypo are very less. Weight reduction will be there and it will reduce body weight, blood pressure and cardio renal protection is there. It reduces the pill burden and sometimes when you are combining these drugs, the cost of therapy also reduces. So what is the proof of that these three drugs are, fixed dose drugs are very effective? You find here that uh, evidence from the Indian context, you find within a few months, the sale of this triple drug fixed dose combination has gone sky high. So large number of prescriptions are there in this, uh, and number of doctors who are prescribing this are huge. You find from 939 in October 22, now 11,687 doctors are using this combination, and probably I think more and more are now using it. So this is the evidence that this combination is well uh, stable in our, uh, you can say, armamentarium, and large number of us are following this concept. And so, this combination, India is showing the way. And here you know that with the evidences of so many evidences of so many studies, now we say that giving this three drug combination is very very useful to our patients, and large number of patients will be on this. Thank you very much.